empty the chamber on them. And how do you do that? Four, six seconds, point eight, point B, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. Welcome to Scoop World Order. It's Friday. We're getting ready to get to Michigan State. We've got East Lansing on our minds. Uh, the team is going to be heading up today. Uh, it's going to be the first road game of the year, which is really unbelievable given that we are in mid-October and we haven't hit the road yet. So this is something that's a little different. Uh, four road games this year, also something different, something that, frankly, if I was a player, I'd love because going on the road does suck. But uh, it'll be interesting. We have a, a team that traditionally has been challenging but this year they literally are in the 90s in both offense and defense so this isn't like the old michigan state teams that really get a lot of trouble they're really struggling right now but you know you got to still play the games and roll the helmets out and go get after it so it'll be interesting to see how this uh this goes i think it's a classic kind of trap game but you know i just don't think that they have the horses to keep up with us but we are going to bring in one of our newest members of the scoop family the great c grant but first we always have to be thankful and grateful for you guys. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to the content. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a like. If you click the little like button right now, it is huge for us. It helps our video uh, be found by more people. It gets recommended to more people. It really, really helps us a lot. So thank you so much for doing that. Shout out where you are from. That is one of my favorite things. I read every single comment. I generally like every single comment. Uh, so you guys, you know, when you get those little thumbs up, those are me. I'm just saying, hey, I appreciate you guys. And uh, give me your predictions for the game. Um, you know, I, I said 40, I believe I said 49 to 14. Uh, I don't think it's going to be much of a game. I think we're going to run right past these guys. But I would love to hear your scores. It's supposed to be a clear day weather-wise. No, uh, no rain, no sleet, nothing, none of that normal crappy Michigan weather. So... Let me know. Put it in the comments. I'd love to hear your comments. And any of our Scoop family that are down in Southwest Florida, we're thinking about you. Hope you guys are safe. Uh, there's help on the way, and uh, we're thinking about you nonstop. With that being said, I'm going to bring in the great C. Grant, the best singer in the history of Buckeye Scoop, and also the guy that made the biggest play in the history of Buckeye Scoop by second Ken Dorsey. C., how are you tonight, brother? I'm good, KB, man. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. So we're going to go uh, back in time a little bit. Young C. Grant. So the head coach, Mel Tucker, is a guy that we're both familiar with. I uh, obviously did not sit in the room like you did with him, but he recruited me. Uh, fantastic guy. I've always rooted for Mel from afar when he was at uh, in the NFL. Then he went to Bama, Georgia, Colorado, Michigan State. Talk to me a little bit about your relationship, your time with Mel Tucker uh, as a cornerback. You know, you're in the room with him kind of coach was he uh did you ever butt heads with him was he a guy that you universally loved you know any juice you got on mel tucker go ahead and spill it out because i think people are dying to hear some great mel tucker stories no um i did play uh for coach mel tucker uh, made that move into the secondary room uh with him in 2001 like you were saying uh playing corner um i think uh i think overall we had a a good relationship. We did bump heads at times. Um, one thing I can say about Coach Tucker, he's very thorough. Uh, he, he's a very attention to detail. I mean, he would get on our behinds for anything from, you know, not getting our pad low to the, you know, the type of socks that we were wearing, you know. So he's, a, you know, in, in the classroom setting, a very good coach, uh, knows his X's and O's, knows his players, uh, sets a standard. Um, so uh, overall, I think that he's a, a well-rounded coach. Uh, I'm sure that he's uh, went through some growing pains over the past 20 years, uh, different systems, different leagues. But overall, I think uh, I think he's a darn good coach, man. That's interesting. He gets on you about the socks because our equipment managers, and, and I love Rob Lachey, but we had the worst socks in the entire universe that were given to us by the Ohio State. They were like these Nike with the red swoosh, like mid calf, like it, like like you're a dad walking around Disney World, you know, who's <laughs> not a cool dad. And like I, I hated those socks, and I literally just said, "Screw it, I'm gonna wear footies." Like for the games, uh, I was told that if I'm not going to wear long white socks, if I tape my ankles and leave a little bit of the white tape showing, because I'd always get it wrapped in the black that that black stretch tape. 
Um, right. If I would show a little bit of the white at the top, that counted as a white sock. So I wow. never wore those terrible socks. So I, I could see, you know, if Mel was a stickler for that, I didn't care just because I was like, these are the worst socks in the universe. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear anything other than quarter socks for the rest of my life. I would, I will never wear anything that covers my calf or my mid calf. But those are what we were given. So yeah. a lot of us had to go to Dick's Sporting Goods and get right. So yeah. that's funny that you you say that. Um, give us uh, three things that Mel Tucker did to develop your game. Uh, maybe if he if he taught you some stuff uh, as a man, um, you know, because I I think that he he really has done a nice job. He's had he's had a really great rise. Uh, obviously, got coming you know through Alabama with Nick Saban and then going to uh, Georgia with Kirby Smart, but. Uh, what were some things, some tips that Mel gave you that, that helped you progress as a player? Um, I think the first, um, you know, setting that at, setting that standard of, hey, we're going to play fast. Uh, we need to play with our pad low. Um, you know, that, that was number one. Uh, the second thing was just our alignments at corner, you know, uh, being able to pre-snap read, understand what's going on understand where we were at on the numbers to eliminate routes that the wide receivers could be running. And then he was real big on running to the ball and making a play. You know, uh, I have a Mel Tucker voice because when I think of him, I only, I only think of him and his voice. So he would be like, I see, I see, I need, I, I need your pad low. I need your pad low. And his big thing behind that was, listen, in games, if you stand up high, you know, what I mean, you're going to play high. So he he really stressed during practice to get our pads low, make sure our knees were bent because throughout the game, you know, you may get tired and you may come up a little bit. So uh, Coach Tucker had a lot of different sayings. Um, I can remember another one where he would say, you know, all right, all right, when you're back there, you're going to have to sink on the credit and break on the cash. So it was just little sayings like that that, you know, we used to laugh, but – you know, all of that uh, played a big part. The guy knows what's going on from an X's and O's standpoint. And, and the thing I like that he really tried to take time to learn each of his players that were going to be out there. Accountability was big. Dude, your, your impersonation of Mel is unbelievable, by the way. Who, who did the best Mel Tucker impersonation? Because when I played Tyler Everett did a great Mel Tucker impersonation. Who did the best Mel Tucker? Because, I mean... Of all the coaches that I was around at Ohio State as a player and even as a graduate assistant, Mel got impersonated more than any other coach. And it might have been more than every, every other coach combined because it was just like his voice is distinct. He always kind of had like kind of a like a like kind of a quirky, like, you know, funny delivery and personality and sayings. And but who did the best Mel Tucker impersonation in the room when you were there? I would have to say myself, and I think my teammates Dude. would say that. I think he was on my ass so much at times to where I had nightmares about uh, him, you know, just just saying whatever he was going to say. Wisconsin great that he is. Uh, but uh, Co Coach Tucker, man, that, that voice is very distinct, um, and uh, he, he's just one of a kind. I mean, I can remember one time in 2001, we were playing up at Happy Valley against Penn State. And uh, Derek Ross had got a uh, pick six. Okay, so there's only 11 guys out on the field at one time. But in the celebration, Coach Trussell's running this film, and then all of a sudden, Mel Tucker out of nowhere says, "Hey, Coach Truss, hey, run that play back, run that play back." He goes, he takes his little uh, pointer that has like a laser on. It. He goes, "We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, I should be fired. I should be fired. Who's running in off the sidelines? Who's doing this? And so it's just like, oh, here we go again. But uh, no, I would say I, I had the best impersonation there at the time. Did 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 D Ross like do anything in the celebration? Like, did he do like a throat slash or throw up like Crips or Bloods or anything? Or no, is he just like was he just straight? I mean, because D Ross yeah. is pretty he's pretty out there. It's like I I could see him doing about anything when he if he got a pick six, man, especially somewhere like Happy Valley where it's that juiced up. Like, did he do anything insane or did he just like hand the ball to the official and jog back to the sideline? I believe on that particular one, man, there were so many guys right behind him in the end zone. I think we tackled him there in the end zone. So, you know, Ross didn't get a chance to do what he would normally do. But speaking of D, uh, speaking of Ross, he, he, he was definitely one of a kind, very confident. 
Uh, one of the guys with the best hand-eye coordination. Um, Ross was the kind of guy that would say, hey, I'm going in this game, I'm getting a pick, and Ross would come out with a pick. And so uh, it was just, uh, you know, he, he was one of the kind, he didn't want to tackle much. I mean, huh. you know, he, <laughs> he, was, he was one of those guys that said, hey, I'm there to cover. And we got uh. linebackers and D-linemen who are going to come up and safeties who are going to make a special get- talent. Third round pack, uh, third round draft pick of the Dallas Cowboys. So. Yeah, he's not. He's like like Dion. Like you know, Dion's like not getting paid to tackle. Now he's getting paid yeah. to cover. We so. grew up watching Dion, so a lot of that. Uh, oh okay. yeah. I, I I love D Ross. I, I I he used to work out in the Woody, and, and he just cracked me up. And I was like, yeah, this guy, he's not he's not going to bed at you know nine nine p.m. like Coach Tress advises. D Ross out running these streets, and he was he's a wild man. Now that's the thing about. You guys in O2, it's funny because there's like this whole, you know, go to bed, get your eight hours, eat spinach and you know, grilled chicken and stuff. And I was like, the guys, like when I got there in 03, you know, I, I was there with like Shane, Alex, you know, like Darian, Will right. Smith, like some of those guys, I don't know if they ever went to bed. And it's like, when you take them out to like Arizona and you put them at the princess and you get them drivers, I was like, there is no way these guys were getting home for curfew. Like none of them, you know, especially like, like Shane would go out on Thursday nights and play in a game on Saturday. And I'm like, how do you do that? It, it like, but like Shane was like all big 10 and he was like you know, really good. And his film was great. And he'd go kick the, you know, again, it's like, it's kind of like the old school, like throwback, like the Raiders or like right. Len Dawson, like smoking a cigarette at halftime, you know, for the Kansas city right. chiefs it's in the super bowl. Like, that was the kind of crew. Was it honestly like, I kind of like it. Like I, I like that the, the guys that had that edge because, you know, when when you got like a bunch of guys that are just like wild men out there, it's like they're not scared of anything. They don't care. I mean, God, they're they're gonna go out. They're gonna drink all your bars dry, and then they're gonna go whip you on the field. And it is what it is. But uh, talk a little bit about that O two team and and just kind of that that edge. And I had guys, you know, like TJ told me about. It. He's like he's like I got down here and I'm thinking, man, you know, I better eat my Wheaties and say my prayers. And then these guys are out here just wiling out. And I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> it's like, I was, I wasn't ready for that coming from square Perry and Keith Wakefield with a crew cut. Like it wasn't, I wasn't ready for, you know, big time college ball, but talk a little bit about, I mean, cause I, I it's just weird. Cause I, I don't know if they could do that as easily now in the media of, you know, the social media age. And, right. you know, if they, if, 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 if people saw you on TikTok, you know, I'll, you know, at, at Alcatraz or whatever, and, you know, it's, it's 2 a.m. on a Thursday. It's, you know, and, and I know, uh, Bella, sorry, he got busted that, that before the Illinois game, cause he was out and, you know, he had DUI. So a, yeah, that was a one with Steve and, uh, just to hit on things. I mean, it, it's a different world in college. I mean, it, it's, it's not high school. Uh, you have guys 18 all the way to about 23 years old, uh, you're going to live your life, you know, and football is a big part of it. But again, you, you got to have your fun. And, and, and just like you were saying, uh, it was a different time. I mean, we didn't have the social media. We weren't worried about, you know, someone having their phone out if there was a fight that broke out or if, or if a guy was having a beer here and there. I mean, we didn't have all that out. But one thing that Coach Tress always uh, relayed to us, he just said, you know, remember who you are and nothing good happens after midnight. And, uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on. Like, for instance, uh, my junior year, 2001, we're about to go up to Happy Valley. Uh, and on that Thursday night, I'm driving past one of the bars there on High Street. I see Chris Gamble, uh, you know, body language is everything. I can see he's about to get in the altercation. So I pull over because, you know, we're always going to have our teammates back. I go in there and, and the night kind of ended with my mom's uh, car getting nine bullet shots. Uh, and you know, things happen, and uh, and that was nothing nice to end up at Penn State. And that morning of the game, having uh, Coach Jim Trussell call me down, I guess the police had uh, contacted him, and just you know things like that happen that you you would never know about unless we're talking about right now. But it's it's a different day and age. Um, I do think that we were more a little more rowdy uh, back in those days. Uh, again. You don't have that big eye in the sky on you like you do right now. Um, and and we kind of policed ourselves. I mean, we, we knew what the coaches uh, expected of us. But again, 
Um, you know, we, we were no, we were no angels. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but, um, you know, when it came to football, that was one thing that we had uh, all in common. And, um, and when Saturdays came, you know, regardless of what happened Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday during the week, you know, we just uh, primed ourselves on being ready to play, play for, represent the great state of Ohio. So, yeah, exactly. And if you ball, as long as you show up on Saturday and you ball, I mean, it's so different than, you know, Babe Ruth or some of these guys. Some of these guys are wild, man. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just now it's just it's a it's a much higher risk reward thing because, you know, these kids are recognizable. They're all on social media. People know what their faces look like more than ever, because back in the day, I mean, when you play, they had like MySpace and in, yeah. instant messenger on AOL. And it's like nobody really knew who, you know, I mean, they'd see you on like the game and the starting lineups, but. That's kind of it. There weren't like eight million Instagram photos and Facebook photos and Twitter photos and all that. So it's a, it's kind of a different. Uh, well, it's a totally different world. Here's a billion dollar question: Have you heard from Chris Gamble at all, ever? Let me see. I've talked to Chris maybe one or two times outside of uh, a national championship game. I, I had a chance sure. to see him in uh, 2012. I think he came back uh, when we were doing our 10 year reunion uh, there at the shoe. I think it was like Urban's first or second year. Um, you know, that's that's the last time I've really talked to Chris, man. And, uh, you know, if he's watching this, man, I hope you're good out there. I understand that, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks, man. You, you know, I'm an introvert myself. I'm trying to get out of that. I know he's a bit of an introvert, but um, to really speak on exactly why uh, we haven't seen him as much. Um, I really don't know. Um, again, I just hope he's good out there. Yeah, I, I, I always knew that he was like, you know, there, there's certain guys that are just so quiet. You never yeah. hear from them. It was funny. I saw D-Man, Darian Scott, uh, in a suite for the Notre Dame game. I said, dude, I'm going to have you. I'm going to interview you. So I actually might bring him on with you. That'd be great. You can interview. Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, I'm sure your boys with D-Man. D-Man's the best. D-Man's one of the best uh one of the best individuals there is out of West Virginia. I think he's out of Charleston, uh, West Virginia. Uh, just a rock solid dude. dude definitely one of the guys. Definitely. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna switch gears real quick to the Michigan State game on Saturday. See, I know you've you've done some research. You know, I, I, I just, it's hard for me to get excited about this game just because I think we're just gonna absolutely steamroll them because they don't. They look lethargic. Uh, you know, traditionally, Michigan State's been a really good defensive team. They're not even that anymore. They're in the 90s on defense, team defense. Uh, they're in the 90s in offense. So they can't score and they can't stop anybody. And you flip to Ohio State and we're top five offense and 14 overall in team defense. I think we're number one in offense, 14 in defense. So it's like totally different matchup. I just, I don't know how they keep up. Uh, they have no skill. Um, o line's shabby, defense is bad. So, what are your thoughts on this game? Uh, and how happy are you for Mel that he signed that like ninety million dollar contract last year instead of this year? <laughs> I, uh, I I've been doing a lot of thinking about this uh, this game, and I you know I've been on the losing end. I was part of that ninety eight team, um, man, a debacle you talk about there in the shoe uh, derailed us from a potential national championship appearance again went up there in 99 and didn't come out so again this is like you said the ultimate trap game but if i'm you know thinking about michigan state right now they're two and three right now they're at the bottom of the big 10. uh their coach coach mel tucker just signed you know million um, uh, what is it 90 some million dollar uh contract last year so the pressure is starting to brew there and so uh, going into this week, uh, again, we are on the road up there at East Lansing. I don't uh, think that we're going to have any problems, but again, like Herm says, that's why we play the game. Um, I think one or two things are going to uh, happen from Michigan State standpoint. You're two and three. Uh, you're at the bottom of the Big Ten. And right now is like you're either going to come out like a scalded dog back against the wall, fighting like hell for your coach, fighting like hell for your season, or either you're going to fold. And I think that that's what we're going to see this week. Um, you know, uh, as far as uh, Coach Tucker, of course, signing that money, man, adds pressure. And uh, we saw 
what happened with Wisconsin last week, you know, uh, with uh, Coach Chris, you know, it, it's a what have you done for me lately uh, league. And so hopefully, um, you know, just for, for Coach Tuck's standpoint, uh, the guys will come out and play for him. But again, you're facing a uh, Ohio State team that is rolling right now. Our offense is getting better each and every week. We talked about our defense last week. We're getting better. So the guys just need to go up there and handle their business. Um, I have the final score as being 52 to 7. I don't think that they stand a chance against us. I think that we've kind of went through um, our own uh, trials and tribulations the past couple of years as far as our defense is concerned. We want to fly around. So I think Coach Knowles is going to uh, continue um, to have our defense on that uh, particular track. And then you know how Coach Day does with the offense. I think that, you know, we have plenty of weapons um, to make sure that we like that scoreboard up. So. Um, I don't see us having a problem, but again, we have to play the game. Yeah, I I agree with you. I think that you know, with the the way we're we're humming, I mean, my biggest issue is just to be the devil's advocate for once is that if there was ever like some sort of a letdown or a lull, you think about things, and I just said, just just as you like, you're a player, so you know, you beat the tar out of these guys last, like, you know, 59 to nothing or whatever it was. I mean, it was, I, I remember it was 49, nothing at halftime was, and they were a top 10, a top 10 team at the time when they came to the shoe and just got absolutely destroyed. So you, you have that from last year, you have, uh, you know, we're on a roll and they stink, you know? So it's like, and then you have the fact that there's a bye week next week. So you know how that could be a distraction for players, especially kids from out of state uh, right. that, you know, they're trying, they're, you know how it is, man. You get done that last, that last practice on Thursday, and you're on the first thing smoking out of there, boy. I'm telling you, it's like the, the guys can't wait. To, the guys from Florida and California, they can't wait to get home. So it's like, yeah. you know, so that's that's a big distraction. Again, it's just a human element. And, I, and and again, like I, if Michigan State had any amount of talent, I'd be more worried about. I so you know, all we got to do is one by one point. But you know, your thoughts on that, like you know, when you were a player, imagine you're in the shoes of the players today, and you're an out of state kid, a Texas kid, a, a Georgia kid, a Florida kid, a, F a California kid. Does that bye week ever lend a little bit of a distraction? Because for some of these kids, especially the freshmen, they got dropped off on like August or, you know, they, they, you know, they were dropped off in June. They went home for a little bit at the end of uh, July and they've been here since the beginning of camp in August, like August 3rd or whatever. And now it's like, they get to go home. Is that, was that ever a distraction to you or any of the other players or especially the out of state guys what are your thoughts on that right i think i think it's a distraction for uh, any and everybody no matter how close you are to columbus or how far you are away i mean uh you're 18 years old you're getting dropped off uh for the first time not going home uh you know throughout the year uh you may have some homesickness so i think everybody kind of has that bi-week circle um, you know, to go home and just kind of let your guard down a little bit with your family, get some home cooking for mom and dad, and then get back. So, um, and then of course, you know, I had teammates from Florida, South Carolina, all over, and and those guys were really, uh, you know, geared up to go home. So I do think that, you know, things haven't changed all that much. I think a lot of the guys on our on our squad are going to want to go home, but again, it's, it's, it's business and, um, and you'll feel much better going home with a win under your belt than, you know, messing around. And what I mean by messing around, I, I, we, we can't go up there and come out of there like 28, 14. I mean, we need to go up there and handle our business and, and really put a thump to these guys. Because if I'm if, the way I think, man, I'm a little old school. Um, I know that we're doing great this year, but, that 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 loss uh, in November, that last one to that team up north last year, would be stinging me all year long to keep me motivated and wanting to be on that track to uh, collide with those guys down the road. So it's one game at a time, and and we cannot allow. I mean, learn from past history. Do not sleep on anyone in the Big Ten because the way I look at it, Kurt, um, there's only two teams left on the schedule that could kind of salvage Michigan State's season at this point. I think if they were able to somehow pull out a victory against us that would kind of you know salvage things and then of course you know when they have a chance to play their in-state rival with michigan that that too so we have to understand who we are and remember that you know no matter how these guys look on film 
they're going to come out for the most part, at least in that first couple of possessions and, and try to give us everything they have. So, All right. So I'm going to wrap this up. Last question. Did you ever not scoreboard watch, but kind of, you know, look at the schedules, see common opponents. Cause that for again, mentally, and I could be completely crazy saying this, but you know, last year they're, they're getting ready to play Michigan. So, you know, Michigan state beat Michigan last year by some miracle of God. They actually beat Michigan last year. And then we go out and we play beat them. We beat them 59 to 10 or what? I mean, I, I gotta look the score up because I keep just making it, but it was some just absolute destruction, like embarrassing, you know, was there ever a time where you look at the thing and say, well, you know, we beat Michigan state by 60 points and they beat Michigan. And so Michigan can't be that good. Was there ever a time where you like thought that just, human nature comparison that type of thing because i think that happens i mean i did it i mean like if i said hey you know we beat penn state penn state beat michigan by 45 points so how good is michigan like you know because i mean i think our guys walked into a fist fight last year in ann arbor and they got smoked uh but did you ever do that as a player where you compare the schedules and say you know it's kind of like a mental thing yeah, it is a mental thing. I think you do look at common opponents and and, and see how how you uh, you know see how the outcome was in those games. But one thing that um, you know you must always think of when you're thinking of that team up north, uh, that is your rival. And so there's nobody, Penn State, Michigan State, uh, no Wisconsin, none of those guys are going to play you to the caliber uh, that you know, say a Michigan's going to play you at the end of the year and vice versa. I mean, we're going to be up for the game too. Uh, we're going to see that this year, you know, a lot of those guys, you know, regardless of what our schedule or not schedule, regardless of what our record is going into that game, you know, 365 days ago, you know, it, it's, it almost feels like a week ago when you lose those games, but to answer your question, it is easy to uh, kind of look and see, okay, we handled this team. And so we should handle this team, you know, because they got beat by them. But that's not always how it works out. You've got to understand that Michigan, Michigan State is a, has their own little rivalry. So that's going to pop off a little differently. And then, of course, uh, the game at the end of the year, um, I mean, it's in a league of its own. But, uh, yeah, I think you get caught. And that's why Coach Trussell used to always tell us, you know, don't, do not get caught up in reading your articles. Do not get uh, caught up in any of this, you know, one one week at a time. Everybody will have their opportunity against us, and it's just a uh, one-week season. So, Yeah, I mean, I always thought that stuff was rat poison anyways. That's why I always thought that, you know, if you start – and, like, I learned it more as I got older, um, especially, the, you know, we went into that Florida game, and it was – you know, everyone said we're huge favorites and we got absolutely destroyed. So, I mean, I, I always, you know, I, I never believed any of it and it got even worse uh, from there. Well, that being said, brother, I'm going to wrap this thing up. We are almost to 30 minutes. We're flying through here. I, uh, I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you so much, Scoop family. We are really, really working hard to uh, keep cranking some great content. We're going to do a game watch party on Saturday, so it'll be live streamed. Tune in to that. I think it will be fantastic. I think you guys will really enjoy it. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a like down below. Click on that little uh, thumbs up. It's huge for us. It's a great add uh, to our video. It helps more people find the video. If you follow us on audio podcasts and you're on Apple uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any of the other formats, please, please leave us a five-star review. That is so huge for us right now. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much. Those all add up big time for us. So thank you so much, guys. We're the number one podcast in the Ohio State realm. Uh, and it's all thanks to you guys, and that has been huge for us. So thank you so much. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Uh, it's game day tomorrow, so get ready for it on BuckeyeScoop.com. If you haven't joined BuckeyeScoop.com, uh, our premium membership experience is absolutely outstanding. We're really, really cranking it, and uh, our game thread is always a blast. So uh, give us a shot. I think anyone that's tried it has loved it, and I think you guys would too. So I will see you on the message board. So as always, thank you, Buckeye Nation, and thank you, Scoop family. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Go Bucks.